Hi everyone, my name is Akshita Nayak and my husband and I own Alternative Roots Wellness Center, which is based in Essex Junction in Vermont. I'm a clinical nutritionist and I have a Master of Science degree in Biochemistry and a Master of Science degree in Applied Clinical Nutrition. Uh, now, obviously, because of the restrictions in place due to the coronavirus pandemic, uh, we are not seeing as many patients as we normally do, but we are in touch with all of them by phone, email and telemedicine appointments whenever that is appropriate. Um, I have been getting many questions regarding supplements during this time. Um, what supplements can I take to boost my immune system? What supplements can I take to fight this virus? Um, so there's a lot to talk about there. So let's get going. Before I list the supplements, I would like to um, say two things. First, supplements are not a substitute for a good diet or a good lifestyle. I understand both of these are under stress at the moment, um, but that's just something you should keep in mind in general. And second, you always need to talk to a healthcare professional before you start taking any supplements. Even if you um, think that you know they're natural, they're herbs or anything like that, you still need to talk to somebody before you start taking anything. Okay, there are five main supplements that are supported by research um, and which can help your immune system function better. Now, these are critical nutrients and they're used by multiple systems in our body. And um, so sometimes during times of crisis, like an illness um, or during immense amount of stress, uh, the use of these nutrients gets amplified in our body. And so if you're not getting enough in your diet, then yes, certainly supplements can help increase that supply so that your body can function properly. You will notice that I don't give dosages in my videos and that's on purpose. Point number one, dosages are dependent on the individual, their overall health and what else they are taking um, in their day-to-day -day lives. And the second is that I realized if I give dosages, then people tend to take every supplement on the list rather than talking to somebody and figuring out exactly what their body needs at that time. So for both of these reasons, I don't include dosages, but I do give um, uh, the food sources for the different nutrients so that that's something you can focus on as well. Okay, so the list of supplements, let's get going. So the first one is zinc. Zinc deficiency has been shown to suppress our immune system. It is required by multiple different cells within the system and so during times of stress it's a pretty good idea to make sure you're getting enough of it. Um, good food sources include dark green vegetables, nuts, beans and mushrooms. Okay the second one is vitamin B. Now vitamin B is very important for energy production in our body and so if you're deficient you tend to feel really tired and very stressed. Uh, but these energy systems are also important for immune function. So it's a good idea to make sure that you're getting enough of this. Um, now, B vitamins, there are many of them and they tend to work with each other. So it is a good idea to take a complex rather than individual B vitamin supplements. Um, unless, of course, there's a specific concern that you are trying to address with your healthcare professional. That's different. Um, good food sources of B vitamins include beans, sprouts, nuts, eggs and whole grains. The third one is vitamin C. Now vitamin C is a potent antioxidant and it's important for the function of our immune system, especially in fighting off respiratory infections. Um, now the requirements of vitamin C during any type of an illness really goes up in our body. And so it's important to make sure that you replenish it regularly. It is water soluble. So the concerns of um, toxicity because of high levels is lower relative to other um, vitamins. So that's, but that's something to keep in mind. You need to take it regularly to replenish it. Um, good sources, um, food sources for vitamin C. Normally we tend to think about um, like citrus fruits, but actually red and yellow bell peppers, sweet potatoes and broccoli can give you much higher amounts of vitamin C for the same serving sizes. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Okay, vitamin D is the fourth one. So normally we think of vitamin D when we're talking about bone health, calcium supplementation, or for people like us who live in places where, let's face it, we get sun for what, five days out of the year or something, full sunshine. Uh, but vitamin D is actually very important for immune function as well. In fact, its deficiency has been noted in many autoimmune conditions as well as chronic conditions um, like diabetes and asthma. Uh, and you can also find the mechanism to activate vitamin D on immune cells, which just shows how important it is for its function. Um, good food sources include mushrooms, oily fish like mackerel and salmon, um, and eggs. 
and of course you need to get outside when you can and get some good sun exposure um, so that's also a, a good way to increase your vitamin D levels. So the last one I want to talk about today is uh, probiotic. Now, a big portion of our immune system is associated with our gut. So it's important to keep it happy and healthy. Um, over the last decade, an incredible amount of research has come out that shows you just how important these little good guys are for our overall health, including our immune function. Any reduction in the number of these guys in our gut um, for any reason whatsoever definitely suppresses our immune response. Um, now, there are two things to keep in mind when it comes to um, probiotic supplements. One, the quality really matters here. This doesn't mean you go out there and get the most expensive one. What it means is that you talk to someone who knows all the different um, brands and products available and can suggest a good one for you. And the second one, which is also important uh, to keep in mind, is that um, there are many different types of bacterial and microbial strains that are found in our system. And so, so research has shown that the effects, the good effects that these guys can have is strain specific. And so it's very important to make sure you're getting the right probiotic for the right reason. Um, and so for both of these reasons, I would recommend talking to somebody before you start a probiotic, just to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck. The best food sources are any type of fermented food. So you have your yogurt, you have kefir, um, fermented foods, um, vegetables like you have um, kimchi, as well as sauerkraut. So those would be your best sources. Okay, so those are the five supplements that I wanted to talk to you about today, but I want you to remember a few more things. The first is that none of these supplements, not one of them, will stop you from spreading the virus if you have it. And the second is that there is no study out there right now that talks about this specific virus and any supplement. All viruses, all infections, all pathogens have their own unique mechanism of attacking or hijacking our system. And until that has been figured out, you can't really get enough studies or good studies about what can be used against it. So that's important to remember. This is a new virus. Our bodies have never seen this before. And that is why it's called the novel virus. The infection rate for this is really high. It's exponential. And that is a huge concern. And um, the third is that a lot of people can have this and be asymptomatic, have no symptoms, or they can have very mild symptoms. And so some in most cases, you might not even know that you have it and that you're spreading it. And what we're trying to do right now is contain the spread. Okay, so what are the things you can do to help out right now? Number one, try and reduce the spread of this infection. And the best way to do that is to maintain all recommendations by the CDC, the WHO, and your local governments when it comes to social distancing, cleaning, washing your hands, sanitizing, that type of stuff. It actually makes a difference. It might seem like we're not really doing anything, but it does make a difference. The second one is that if there are supplements that you have taken in the past that help you feel better sooner if you fall sick or you feel like you don't fall sick as often when you take it, then that's great. Supplements don't work the same for everyone. So if you know something that works for you, then that's a good first step. Definitely talk to your healthcare professional and you can start taking them or let me know and I'll give you more information about the ones that I've recommended today. But you have to know that supplements are not your get out of jail free card and you cannot supplement your way out of this. If you feel sick or feel like any of these symptoms are coming on, you have to talk to your doctor because you have to be assessed, tested, treated, tracked very important. And if you do go in for treatment, if your symptoms get severe enough that you do need treatment, you have to let them know all the different supplements, medications, home remedies, anything else that you have been trying at home. It's important to have that information available to give to them because just like how medications can interact with each other uh, and cause problems, supplements, medications, and herbs can also interact with each other and cause problems. You want everyone to be on the same page here. So what are we trying to achieve with social distancing? Well, we're trying to bring down the infection rate, essentially reduce the number of people infected to a more manageable level, relatively speaking. We are trying to give the medical community and the research community the time that they need to figure all of this out, to come up with treatment options as well as a vaccine. Both are important, both will take some time. Um, this is different from the flu for a variety of different reasons. Um, the length and severity of the infection, if someone gets it, um, a bad. 
the length of the asymptomatic but contagious phase, the exponential um, rate of infection for this particular virus, and the fact that this has just come in as a tidal wave rather than gentle waves coming in um, over a predicted season. A slight change in the infection rate, up or down, will help us figure out and decide if our medical capacity and capabilities can meet the challenge or get completely overwhelmed by it. So we need to do our part. I'm a clinical nutritionist and I work with a chiropractor. So I fall under what's considered alternative medicine. Um, and I've had a lot of people uh, talk to me about it as well as some patients about how at this moment Big Pharma is trying to make a quick buck by trying to push vaccines or medications. Well, there's a lot to unpack there and I don't think I can get through that in one video. Um, but what I will say is this. The situation we are in right now, this is what the medical community is the best at managing. They're giving it their absolute best. It's an emergency situation. They're coming up with, they're doing studies and coming up with treatment options as soon as possible. Vaccines will probably play a major role in making sure that this does not happen again, this does not come back again. All of this requires time and all of these are facts. So yeah, there are certain things that you can certainly do to keep yourself and your family safe within your house as well as when you step outside, but you also have to do things um, with your community as a whole. You have to follow recommendations from your doctors as well as the local, um, the national and uh, international health organizations. At the end of this, if it seems like we overreacted or we did too much, well, that's what success will look like. So let's all really hope that that's what happens. Um, I do plan on making more videos about um, cooking with young kids at home or simple meals you can make for yourself, uh, dealing with stress, anxiety, and depression during these unprecedented times, um, the idea about diets when you're in quarantine, uh, and many other topics. If there's anything you're interested in, please certainly let me know and I'll be happy to look at that and see what I can do. But until then, um, take care of yourselves. Thank you for your time and be well.